to another episode of Candidly with Coffee. We're right back. We are back. We got a little bit of new camera equipment going on today. Yep. Getting ready for our um, YouTube. Oh, hold on. Alyssa messes with my chair. Hmm. Oh, I have to. I, I'm going to like she got to snap me. at her. Every time I come sit in my chair, it's messed up. Because she changes it to fix her, but it's my chair. Real world problems. So when you leave the room, you got to put it back to my settings, in my opinion. You better tell her that. Jeez. Um, anyways, I've got some a double shot of espresso with my little dollop of whipped cream here. Nice. Cheers. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday, you guys. Football Sunday. What's on the agenda for us today is we're going to, um, it's sunny outside. It's going to be brisk, you know, like a cool day. Yeah, it's but fresh out there. It's sunny. That makes me happy. We can, we're facing the window here, so it's nice to see the sunshine come in. Right. And I think we're going to go to Santana Road, just sit at a coffee shop and get some work done. I have to edit this podcast, so yeah. <laughs> I'll be editing and it just kind of to get out of the house because I didn't really... We got out of the house yesterday, but I felt like I had to go to Home Depot and just... You went to work out. I was most in the house. You did a lot of running around. Yeah, so... I, I was know. glued to the TV watching UFC fights. <clears throat> um, But Friday, we saw a movie. We saw a rom-com. The one we talked about that we were going to go see it was called Tickets to Paradise. Good little movie. George Clooney and Julia Roberts. They have really good chemistry. Is that considered a chick flick we watched? It's cons yes, yeah, absolutely. But okay. it's romantic comedy. But it was funny. It was a good movie. You know, it's a chick flick that I think not a total chick flick yeah. to where you can only see it with your girlfriends. Yeah, it's a romantic comedy, is what I would call it. And it's, I feel like we've gotten away from those. Like, like we talked about. I think we talked about it on the last episode. But like the early two thousands had tons of great romantic comedies. Mm -hmm. This was just like those. It's like a good one. Like I would definitely watch it again. I loved it, and if you're gonna go see it, make sure you stay for the bloopers at the end, because that's the I laughed so hard. The last five minutes was bloopers during the credits, and I thought it was hilarious. But it was interesting. It was an interesting. It was definitely an interesting movie. Yeah. Bali's a beautiful place, huh? Yeah, they were in Bali. Oh my gosh. Oh no, I forgot to have Siri. Hey Siri, turn on Do Not Disturb. Hey Siri. Okay. Turn on Do Not Disturb. Okay, sorry guys. I, I I swear to God, my devices drive me absolute crazy. They drive me crazy. Too much ding, 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 it's ding. It's constant. Yeah, alerts. It's if I, I am know. you. That's why I'm. I can't tell you. Like my brain goes into overload sometimes, and when I tell you the amount of DMs that I get, like you guys, the DMs give me anxiety when they pile up. So when they pile up. I end up just clearing the whole box and I don't look at them. It's no disrespect to anybody that's DMing me. It's like a personal anxiety thing that I get. Mm -hmm. And that's why I don't commit like, oh, I get back to all my DMs. I don't. I don't because they're, they're a source of anxiety for me. I don't know why. That's why I tell my clients, don't DM me. You will not. It's because I, that's not for clients because clients I need to get back to. Yeah, I yeah, can't yeah. ignore clients. Yes. So I tell them email, do the chat, tag me in a Facebook post. Don't DM me because sometimes I don't read all of them. I, I Most of the time I don't read all of them. If I respond to a DM or get into a DM conversation with you, it's because you happen to catch me. Mm -hmm. And then I'll respond. And then once I go away from it, the screen, like I never go back to it. So what happens when there's people inquiring about your program on your DMs? Sometimes I miss those. Damn. I'll be honest. But I try. what I try to do is scroll through, like on a morning, I'll scroll through and, and read like the first line, the preview, to see if it's like inquiring about the program, and then I'll, I'll try to answer those. Um, a lot of BS in that too, though, huh? No, not necessarily BS, yeah. but people... Just people like reacting to my stories and commenting, like not yeah, yeah, bad, so, or asking yeah. for links. So I do try to anticipate questions. I try to link everything automatically. Mm -hmm. I try to do all of the things I think they're going to ask for yeah. so that they can get their information if they watch my story. So, yeah, I don't know. And that's why I have my Amazon storefront. Look, everything I buy is either in my LTK or my Amazon storefront. It's all linked. I put it in there before I put it on Instagram. People don't realize how busy uh, people who work from home or home business or have your own business and how social media consumes a lot of your time. 
it's crazy. You can't stay on there too long because then you won't get your work done. You yeah, I have to, to I have time blocks. I use a time blocking system for my time management. I just have to like block everything out. Like I have content time, I have editing time. You know, there's filming content, editing content, mm -hmm. replying to emails, working on meal plans, it, planning content. It's a lot. It is. It's a lot. So I laugh because sometimes I'll, I'll tell you like, oh, Saturday's my day off. But really, do I have a day off? No. Not a full day off. I don't think... working or doing something. Yeah. I don't have a full day off. I have hours off. Yeah. I mean, even yesterday you were kind of working, running your brother to Home Depot to get more stuff. No, I house. was working. I did filming yesterday. I posted. I did lots of work yesterday. I set up all the new camera. It's almost like you can't help yourself sometimes. Mm-mm. Just... And now I do this thing where I film pretty much for every product that I have, that I get from Amazon, I film a video review of the product that you guys don't see. It's not like on my Instagram. It just goes directly to Amazon. So that's, it's just a lot, you guys. So they can follow you on Amazon too? Yeah, I have an Amazon storefront. I have it linked in the show notes in the description. Um... Definitely anyway, not. so Friday we saw the movie that was good. I recommend it. If you're looking for like a feel good movie, go for it. And then Funny. yesterday we tried a spot. It was recommended to us called Scratch. It's like um uh Nashville hot chicken. It started as a food truck. I did not know that. Hello? Yeah. Are you <laughs> like, no, I'm listening to you. Oh, I thought No, I'm listening. It looks like cuz I'm I'm seeing you here through the mirror. And it looks like I'm you're listening. Zoning out. No. Anyways, went to Scratch, and it started as a food truck, um, and it was good. Yeah. Big old sandwich, though. Ooh, they put a lot of a lot of protein. You guys. It's intimidating. You know when I, when I, don't I, like, I don't like sandwiches that mm -mm. big, honestly. No, I don't it either. It was good. It was just... It was good, but it was very big, but Lisa warned big. me that it was big. A little messy. But here's the thing. But. This is the problem. It's a delicious sandwich, but it didn't need to be that big. No. That thing's humongous. It, half the size. I, I took off... I took off uh, about four ounces, right? Four or five ounces of chicken. Ugh. I broke off the sandwich before I even oh, ate the like sandwich. Ten ounce chicken on there. At least. Huge. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, check out this picture right here. This is the sandwich. It's freaking ginormous. I took off a huge piece, and then did I eat everything? Yes. Other than that piece, I didn't finish yeah. that piece. Um, and I did not get any spice, and it was still like a tiny spicy. What did you get? Level three. Level three? Would you get, if you were to go back, would you get level three again? Mm, maybe a two. Yeah, it was a little it's not. It's not that. It's just, just um, sandwiches. So, yes, I would recommend that place, but be be advised, it's enough for two people. And the fries were okay for me. All right. It was an okay. You know what? To be honest, I, I hate to admit this. I'm just a simpleton when it comes to food. I like... McDonald's and Taco Bell, <laughs> cheese pizza. Um, that's because that's old school. Food. And a burrito. On there. I like simple. like basics. I am a simpleton. Also, when it comes to dressing, when it comes, I, to, I I'm just Thai a simple food. person. I think. I love Thai food, pastas, but you're right. I don't care for Thai. Food. I like Thai food, but I don't love Thai food. It's too complicated a lot of times. Too like too many things. It can be good, but. It's just not my. I mean, I like other foods. Yeah. It's just that I'm I a know basic what you mean. A person. Go Sometimes I just like to have what a guarantee what I love and not take risks and just, you know, have mm -hmm. whatever. I didn't have a really heavy, like, cheat day yesterday. I didn't. I, I kind of, that was my only meal, and then I snacked, but nothing nothing major. And then I did, I, I did my workout. I was, I was going to mention I did my, um, my coffee date with my cousins, and I love that. Yeah. I love it. Like we, up. it's no, it's like, just like laughter. Like I mm. need like laughter in my life. Like yeah. we just laugh because we are living very similar, relatable lives mm. right now. Just with our lives, our parents are getting older mm. and I know it's so nice to hear like other people have such similar like situations go on it just it's it laughter is good for the soul oh my goodness the best especially for people who suffer from mental health they have a hard time being happy or laughing laughing i try to laugh and smile yeah like it's we important. laugh like i laugh like belly laughs yeah. like, and i love That's that so like important. it's so therapeutic it is like, it's important people don't realize laughing is super it's a good thing 
yeah, like you need more laughter. Like I laughed on Friday night at the movie, then I laughed Saturday morning. Like I need that right now because my life is just crazy right so now. So I love comedy, watching comedy. I don't like all that dark stuff. This dark stuff you watch, I'm not... Mm -hmm. uh, you know what's been getting me lately? I'm not going to lie. I've been getting a little caught up on TikTok. The problem is I have watched a lot of videos on like people with cancer and death and all this stuff on TikTok. So now it's feeding me. So my For You page on TikTok where it's not people I follow, but TikTok feeds me videos they think I will like. Yeah. It's very dark, sad, depressing stuff. I'm and good. like last night... I went to bed with just sad, depressing thoughts in my head. It was a lot of sadness on TikTok. And it just, like, brought me down, like, dying animals and things. It just brought me so down. And it had me missing karma and my mom a lot last night. Like, I was just... I felt like a wave of grief come over me. And <clears> I was <throat> sad. I had a hard time falling asleep. I had, like, visions in my head. But it was really weird because I had, like... I found myself in this in-between state, almost like, you know how, like, I can control my dreams sometimes? Yeah. I don't know if I've ever talked about that on the podcast, but I can, con I, I have this ability, like, to, I think it's called lucid dreams. Like, you know you're in the dream. You know you're Yeah, dreaming. where I, it's, I don't it's, have that. it's a sensitive state in your dream where you're almost about to wake up, but you, you're not. So you, you can control your dreams. You could go visit loved ones that have passed you can meet celebrities it's look it up you guys lucid dreaming i've always been able to do it it takes practice so like when you don't do it for a while you kind of lose it i haven't done it like a few months back i was able to do it because i only because i had thought about it and talked to my niece michelle about it and then i did it but last night i kind of did it a little bit but it was in a weird way i wasn't dreaming but my eyes were closed and i was almost asleep and i started seeing visions in this is going to be hard to explain you guys are going to think I'm weird but I was seeing visions like it was almost like images think about like think about this like when you look up into the clouds and you try to see something like you look in the clouds you think oh I see the shape of an animal I yeah. see a dog yeah it was like that but think about it almost like liquid visions where mm -hmm. I could start to see visions so I would think about what I wanted to see and then I would see it so I'm like I want to see my mom's face damn and so, like, I would see my mom's face in, like, the liquid vision. And then I wanted to see karma. This is last night. Wow. But it's because I was thinking about them a lot. Mm -hmm. And then I, it was a form of lucid dreaming. And so I was able to see my mom's face. I was able to see karma. But then I started to see images that were, like, not pleasant. They were, like, not pleasant images. So I shook it off. And I'm like, okay, this is enough. Wow. Um, I don't know what the hell that was. I wasn't... I was aware. I was not sleeping. I have to say that. I was not sleeping. I was aware of... I was in bed. My eyes were closed. Everything was off. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what happened. It was really weird. But it was kind of like similar to lucid dreams. But lucid dreams, I used to have... I started that when I was young and it, it was fun. I would fly. I would go to my friend's house. I would... My sister recently had a lucid dream. Really? Mm-hmm. And she was able to... She saw her mother and was talking to her. But she goes, wait a minute, Mom. You, you pa you're you not supposed to be here. You passed away. And she yeah. was talking to her. Yeah. And she said my mother was just giggling like a little kid laughing. That's so strangest cool. Strangest thing, yeah. Yeah, I feel like I've had dreams where I know it's a dream. Like it's just a dream. Yeah. But I've... Because I can feel it. It's a different feeling. But mm -hmm. I've had one specific dream with my mom that was, I felt like it was not a dream. Like she came to me because I felt differently about it the next day. I felt differently about it in the moment. She was sending me a message. Yeah. And um, I know my brother has had one dream like that as well. Really? Where he felt that way as well. And he felt better after, but he was still really sad. But I've had, uh, it's just crazy. Dreams are dreams. Your are crazy. mother has came to your brother too? Yeah, one time she where him? he said this was different. She said it was, she was going to... Well, she I don't it. remember, so I can't... I yeah. don't remember exactly what she said, but he said it was different. He hugged her. Wow. And he he bawled, and he woke up crying, but he See, said he remember felt... Remember happened to me? Yeah. My mother Only away. one time. You woke up, like, bawling. Like, bawling, you were a crying. wreck. Yeah, wreck. Like, I don't know what, what we talked about. I see I saw my mother, but... Yeah, I woke up crying. Remember that? Yeah. I, mean, I haven't done that since you I was were a kid. like You were down... In, you went down to the kitchen, and you were still crying in the kitchen. 
That was crazy, right? Yeah, I, re I remember that very well. I don't remember the dream. I know I saw my mother and was probably tripping. I don't know what we talked about. I don't remember. I don't know. It's just crazy. The whole death and dying and all of that just still has me like, I don't know. You know why? Because we still don't know for certainty what it's like on the other side. Mm -hmm. We have all this speculation. We have all this religion telling us it's this, this, and that. Nobody really knows till we leave. I'm sorry, but there's yeah. no... There's no factual evidence. I get it. People see the light. There's some people that are underwater for 15, 20 minutes and they see their body under the water and they're floating. I, I know. I've heard a lot of stories. But we don't know what it's like beyond that. And we so don't. I'm watching that um, that, that show on Netflix. You turned it off when I was in the middle of watching it last night. But anyways, the Netflix Sorry, show, um, the 28 Days, it's kind of interesting, kind of scary, but they're doing like paranormal type mm -hmm. stuff. and Haunted houses. Like yeah. Really legit. Yeah, like where it's always like in those states, like North Carolina, Connecticut, 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 and Massachusetts, very spiritual, New York, yeah, very those states. You got to remember too, because those, those battles were fought over there. A lot of, a lot of death on the East Coast. A lot of bloodshed. Mm -hmm. Louisiana is another place that's super haunted. Yeah, for reason, the French quarters, all that. Remember, they, they're going to Louisiana, Louisiana, Connecticut, and North Carolina. North Carolina. The yeah. three spots. I got I to gotta watch. That was interesting. We have one here in California, too. A town that's super haunted. The tourists go there, and they warn you, do not take any relics. And somebody, if people have taken relics, and their life has gone to shit. I don't know. I would never mess around with that. I know there was an episode of Brady Bunch a long time ago where they took a... Um, a relic from Hawaii, and they were kind of <laughs> Yeah, cursed. and they were, like, doomed. No way. You I, just got to be careful. But, the, yeah, I... I Damn, I can't remember the name of this town here in Cali. It's literally a lot of tourists go there, but they warn you, do not. And idiots always want to. We tell somebody, do not, people do the opposite. And then they yeah. go crying back, like, I'm sorry I took this. And bad things have been happening in their life. They, run, they go back to the same place and return it. Like, dude. Oh, hell They told no. you not to. Yeah, that's what I was just telling you. Like, Ouija boards. Remember you told me not to, I was tempted to mess you with it? We just don't know. We don't know. We're. But humans are arrogant. We think we know everything. We don't know shit. We think we do, though. We all we know. You don't yeah, know what like, you're playing with. I don't know. Because you don't know. Like, it is an energy. I do believe in, like, energy. And so you have to be careful, like, when it comes to, like, energy type stuff. I don't know. We are energy. Think about yeah. it. When our energy dies inside of us, our body just, our shell goes, that's it. I don't know. I know. It's so weird. And it's, it is like natural death, like on a hospice death or whatever. It is truly like reverse childbirth. You witnessed it. You like, and I can attest to that. It is like reverse childbirth, because I've seen both, and it's it's incredible, like, how how similar it is, but in the reverse. It's so crazy. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like, I was talking to my dad about, you know, his health and stuff like that yesterday, and, you know, what has my dad always said, like, since I can remember and since you've known him, what does he say? In the end, it's always ugly. Yeah. He always I mean, says that. I mean, no shit. And then, it's like, obvious. So it's and then, like yesterday, of course it is. he was saying, like, oh, like, why does this have to happen to me? And I was like, Dad. It happened I, to me? You but this is that. this is what I told explained to him. I said, Dad, you are 82. This is the price you pay for getting old. It's part of life. But it's part of getting old. This is It's a blessing that you got old. So you're old enough to see your body reverse and start to break down yes. not everybody has a, that blessing they mm -hmm. they die before their body was ready to go before their body shut down or they their body malfunctioned when they were young but not everybody has that it's a blessing that you live to old age and are experiencing this and he thinks i'm crazy when i say this i got a friend whose sister's in her 30s not looking too good cancer spreading everywhere in her body they went to do treatment nothing it's it's and she's in her 30s she could be saying the same thing it's sad probably has kids i don't want to say who yeah. it is a friend of my sister but like 82 30s why does it have to happen to her she, 50 more years you know what i'm saying Difference. i know i mean it's it's still it's, sad it, and it's, it's, i said it dad sad. but you it's know no what way i have putting it he's he's scared to die and everybody most of us are it's and just, what i told him what i asked him though like i asked him i said but dad didn't you ever think about this like did you ever because did you, you wanted to live to be old, but how did you think that your life would end? Did you think you would just like press a button and be like, okay, I'm ready to go peacefully now. Tink. It doesn't work that way. We you all, know, we all like, want didn't, to, to go out in our sleep. Didn't you, it don't go but I asked him, didn't you, cause he's both of his parents 
passed away. I said, when you saw them breaking down, having health issues, dementia, health, tons of health issues, my grandfather, did you ever stop to think like, wow, like this is what it's like to get old and this, this I wonder what it's going to be like for me? And he said, no. I said, because I think about it. Because watching mom and watching you has me thinking about it and has me thinking like, what will I do when I'm older to enjoy life even when I'm old and starting to kind of like shut down? Like, what will I get joy out of? I think about these things now so that I'm not completely caught off guard. Like, how will I handle being sick and tired and weak and needing help? And how will I deal with it? I'm thinking about it as because I'm not, I'm not dwelling on it. There's a difference, but I'm trying to just, I, I'm filing it away in a file back there like that, you know, so that I remember when I'm older, you know, what I'll need from my kids and what, you know, I'll set my expectations for them. And, you know, I'm just thinking about it. Whereas he didn't think about it. I mean, he's blessed. Most don't live to 80s. But you Most know what the other thing I'm is? I'm not going to live to be 82. You know what the other thing that's hard for him is that he was not a sick person ever. Yeah. So he doesn't know how to be not a hundred percent. Do you know how like if that's you've tough. if you've lived your whole life being sick mm -hmm. of different things, different ailments, like you've just had an unhealthy life, yeah. then it's not that shocking to you. But if you've lived mm -hmm. strong and healthy, not in and out of the hospital, not in and out of the doctor. Yeah. And then suddenly, in six months' time, you're a sick person. It's I mean, like he, out he, of nowhere. He, he narrowly escaped death already. So he, he bought some time. Yeah, exactly. I mean, right he's there. not, he's here with us and, you know, he's not like on his deathbed or anything yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. He's still functioning. But, you know, it's, time is winding down and I'm doing my best. I think I told you yesterday, I'm like, I'm just really trying to... I, I think I'm compartmentalizing a little bit. It's like I, I have these file drawers in my head and I think like gr it's not the time for grief right now. But I just have to like compartmentalize it. I can't think about, I think about that right now. I got to function. No. You know what I mean? I got to like, no. I'll tell you one thing I, I didn't prepare for. So kind of very similar to way to the way I'm telling my dad. It's like I should have taken my own advice. I should have thought, like, why didn't I think to prepare for when my parents were older, when I saw them lose their parents? I didn't stop to think, like, wow, someday I'm going to lose them, and I should think about, like, what role I'm going to play in that process. Babe, 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 babe. Nobody thinks about that. You're, you're doing too much. No one no one thinks about that. We're living to now. We don't think we're all, none of us think about death. Most humans walk around thinking that that day is never going to come for whatever reason. They're living to now. When death is always around the corner, honestly. What I mean by that is you get in your car, hop on the highway, or you get in the car, you have a light here. We live near Capital Expressway. People blow through the red lights all the time. You hit a green, you go, and boom, so I blow through the light. You're dead. T-bone, gone. Happens all the time. No, I know, but See, so. I don't want to think about that. No, no, no. But that's not a guarantee. But losing your parents is a guarantee. For sure, for sure. So you should 100%. think about it. Like, if you're out there right now and you haven't lost your parents, and you're, of like, in your 40s and 50s, mm -hmm. Start thinking about yes, it. Yes, of course. You should start thinking about it. What's that going to look like? What what is their what is it going to look like when they need your help for care? What is their what's that plan to help them? You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you do have to think about it. And I think my advice to people is think about it. Talk to their parents about it. What their what they want. What their plan is. What you know. Like what it's going to look like if they yeah. need help. If they can't live alone anymore. Whatever. I just I don't know. It's an, I, I, it's important to prepare for it a little bit. I feel like I was a little blindsided and because I never thought about it. And like when my mom passed, again, I still didn't think about it. I thought, man, this is terrible. I have to grieve my mom. I did not for one second think that now that my mom had passed, that now I'm going, my dad is going to need help because he was fully functional, fully function. They were fully functioning, but it didn't realize how the impact it would have on him losing her. And that was where I felt blindsided. Yeah. Like I just never stopped to think that, oh my gosh, he's going to need it. Need me, need us, you know? So it's just, it's different. So like my life is just 
different it, right now. It's sad. We talk, me and you talk about that, that one day one of us will have to go. I know. I'm not thinking about that now. We're still young, but one day. I know. And it's crushing for the person that yeah, stays behind. It is. It's hard. It's the most biggest impact to them because I love my mom and obviously grieving her has been a process, but the same token, she's not a part of my everyday life, every hour life. And that's why when I lost karma, obviously it's a dog. It's different than losing my mom, but it was kind of a different impact to my life. Because karma was a part of my daily life. Not even daily life. Every minute of my life. Like right now, Charles is right behind me. I'm sitting on the edge of this seat because Charles is literally right behind me. They're a part of my every minute life. And so that was just a huge impact to my routine. And it was kind of eye-opening for me. And it made me think of like, okay, I empathize with my dad a little differently. Yeah. Because I thought... We're thinking like, oh, but we lost our mom and we're not stopping to think like, but he lost someone who's soulmate, his go-to person His for every 60, 62 years are together. Yes. 62 years. That's, they knew each other. So every minute of every day, yeah, you know, yeah, they seven. bickered, but it doesn't matter. It's that, it's that every minute of every day. And it's just, it's very impactful. Yeah. That's tough, man. It's yeah. A, so I got to talk to my father too. I have been mean, talked to him recently. Just check on him, see how he's doing. Yeah, because he's same thing. He's getting older. His health's not the best, you know. Yeah, so I would I would recommend and having like if you have siblings, like get together with your siblings and kind of just like figure out like what what you know that would look like for you. I finally I feel like I finally I'm I'm trying to get into my groove like in a structural way on how this incorporating my dad's needs into my schedule you know instead of kind of like letting things happen unexpectedly I'm kind of just like I'm a scheduled person you guys know this I'm a routine person so I'm I'm scheduling my time with him into my routine so that I make I know I make time for him and make sure he has what he needs and and um so I have that now like on my calendar every day so it's like a two-hour block where I'm like okay this two hours is dedicated to what my dad might need today. Do I need to go to the store? Mm -hmm. Do I need to make appointments? Do I need to just visit with him? Um, whatever it is, it's like I have a two-hour time block, uh, you know, five, six days a week. Yeah. Where And then as he needs more care, that time will increase. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what I... Well, so what do you have going on? Anything? Not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. There's probably, uh, like you said, get out today. Catch some sunshine, take the dogs out. How's the how's the mood for you lately? How's the what? The mood. You've been telling me that, you know, just feel like there's more and more people that you talk to that's like men in their forties that that are going through it. Yeah. Yeah, I just try to, you know, prepare them, keep them positive. You know, because whatever something happens to us in our forties. I'm not trying to use no excuse, but something that did change your side. Isn't it kind of like, a, I think, like we talked about it last week, but it's like menopause. We don't men. realize it. And then we don't like to talk about it. Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like I've heard you <clears throat> giving pep talks a lot lately. <laughs> not that I'm going to put anyone on blast in particular, yeah. but just pep talks. And um, I'm excited to go to the coffee shop. What about you? What else we got house. on the agenda? Um... What else we got on the agenda for today? Yeah, to talk about. Oh, for our I listeners. Know. I'm just winging it. We just wing it. Just winging it. Just winging it. Winging I'm just it. saying, like, I'm excited to like get out of the house because I feel like I haven't, I haven't like enjoyed the weekend at all yet. Yeah. It's just like one thing after another after another. I know we're finishing up some Home Depot type projects today, but that's why I want to get out of the house with yeah. the dogs because Nobby is kind of my brother is kind of like doing little things. It's amazing, like the little things you can do. To like spruce things up. All we did was change the doorknobs and and paint the door. Oh yeah, painted paint the, the front door. door. You forgot? That's right. Yeah. It's it's black. <clears throat> it's black. We painted the front door black because it was getting kind of faded or whatever. So I like to I don't know. I find that when I'm stressed, I I like to organize or change that things. It's like my um outlet. I like to organize, clean. Keeping your mind busy. That's what you're doing. It, yeah, like it's... Bring it, your satisfaction in a different way. 
Just yeah. getting your mind off the other it's bullshit. It's like a dopamine life. dump. Yeah. So like organizing or cleaning, rearranging is like a dopamine dump for me. And I feel like I'm craving, like I'm needing <laughs> that. And so I'm looking for things to like change in my life just to kind of like give me that dopamine dump because I'm, yeah. I'm in need of it whenever I can, wherever I can get it. Like what gives that, what gives you that? Dopamine dump? Yeah. Like what, like. You know, you know, because like for for some people, it's food, they turn to food or alcohol, drugs, you know, for things like that. But what what helps you like working out, training, hitting the bags? Like, but if you are like having a very stressful day or whatever, like, what's the one thing that you working turn out? To? Guarantee is gonna make me feel better. That's Will you I'm like thinking. stop and go like, okay, I'm so stressed, I need to go work out? I don't know at the moment if I'm gonna do that, but I just know it's gonna help me eventually if I get to it right there and then or later on. I don't have nothing like I'm gonna stop it. Oh, I'm gonna do this. To Smoke some weed, I guess. I don't, I don't know. Does that help you though? Yeah, it relaxes me. I feel like I haven't done it in a long, long time, but I mm. feel like it gives me anxiety a little bit. There's a lot of people anxiety. It it can be anxiety provoking. Oh my gosh! Of course it, it could. I've I cut, think I'm gonna I've sneeze. Cut, I've Sorry, cut, guys. I've cut back. You've cut back. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. Because I don't want to. I always overdoing it like too much. I don't want to cut back because I got to pay attention to my anxiety and. Uh, Cutting back on caffeine. Try not to drink nothing in the well, afternoon. It's good to reset. Just morning. Yeah, I always think about what you said. Reset. Reset your tolerance. Everything. Yeah. Um. You know, I remember a while back. Remember, we always say excessive is not good. Yeah, so. like a while back, I, I was my sleep was horrible. My sleep was just absolutely horrible, and I couldn't stay asleep. I couldn't figure it out. I had my sleep routine. I had I do my melatonins, my night shred from InnoSubs. I did all the things. But I wasn't having good sleep. And I thought, you know, it was the stress in my life or whatever. Um, but I really took a look at, like, my caffeine consumption. And it was because I was having Diet Coke for dinner. That's and right. There's caffeine in Diet Coke. And I don't like, and I would always say, like, oh, I don't like to have coffee after noon. Yes. Because I don't want caffeine to in interrupt my sleep. But I was having Diet Coke for dinner. Yeah. And so we switched to the caffeine-free Diet Coke. And ever since I did that, I kid you not, my sleep is good. Like it is. You sleep good. I sleep good. You knock out early. And then a couple of months ago, I did like a um, a sleep challenge with my clients. Every month, we kind of focus on a new thing. And I do it with them. I'm like, it's important. If, you know, what you focus on improves. Remember that. And so it was a sleep challenge to try to improve sleep. So I wanted to get consistently eight hours of sleep. And ever since I did that challenge, my sleep is now consistently eight and a half. Dude, that's wonderful. Eight and a half hours. Good sleep is also good for the mental health, the body, everything. You're just energized. Good sleep is a chain reaction to the rest of your day. If you have good sleep, you have yep. more energy, you burn yep. more calories, you're more productive, you are in a better mood. Pushing harder through your workouts. You have better willpower, you have less stress. True. Sleep is critical. People do not. That's how when you're tired and hungover, you didn't sleep good. And guess what you want to eat? The greases of foods. Yeah, because right away, you're when with poor sleep, you have less energy, mm -hmm. less willpower, more cravings, yep. less motivation. Yep. Like so, it's really important, and it really does make a huge difference for me when I have that that good sleep. It, it makes a huge difference, and I would say I hit my sleep goal. My sleep goal is eight hours, six times out of the week I hit my sleep goal. The only time I usually don't is on a Friday night if we go to the movies because if we go to the movies, I stay up later and it, I'm someone that needs wind down time. My wind down time, it has to be at least an hour. I can't just go to bed and go to sleep. I feel like I'm jealous of you because you can. Yeah. It's time to sleep, it's sleep. You are, sleep, it's sleep. Uh, like, that is a blessing. You have no idea. You have two things about you that are a true blessing and that is... You can <clears throat> sleep very easily. You can mm -hmm. be like, I'm going to take a nap. And you take a nap. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful thing. And then your digestion. Mm -hmm. You are like the clockwork. The problem is that I can't stay asleep. That's where it messes me up because my bladder. I have to go to the bathroom. Yeah. Another night. Most guys my age do. I talk to everybody. I'm like, damn, none of us can sleep through the night. But do you fall asleep? Do you have a hard time falling back asleep? 
uh, when you get up? No. No, I, I feel no, like I've never out. seen you kind of tossing and turning really no, I can very rare. Not back out unless I start thinking, overthinking things. Start That's thinking. the thing, though. You have this blessing about you. Like, I'm jealous about those two things your digestion, mm -hmm. like, you go like clockwork, mm -hmm. and your sleep. Thanks. And and sleep is, is just so critical. Had, that's why I had a good, not to get off topic, a good colon clean. Uh, yeah. Report on my colon. I knew it would clean. be. Because of your digestion, ever since I've known you, you've always said like, oh, I have, you've never really complained of stomach aches. You never complain about being bloated. No. You never complain mm -hmm. about those things at mm -hmm. all. Like, I feel like your gut health, that's what I said. Like, you're going to be fine. Your gut health is good. Trust me. I see. I know what you are like. Your gut health is good. And I can go, I can go to the bathroom in public and on vacation. I don't have no constipation, vacation, constipation, <laughs> vacation, or vacation, vacation, constipation. That's what I have. I don't have that. Because I can't go in, in strange bathrooms. I could. I, I don't like to, but I, I can. I'm not going to hold it. That's, ugh. Yeah. No. Also, I, I like, like, ever since I got here. my um, Apple Watch, I <clears> like <throat> being able to track my, my sleep on there. It's It's been great to track my sleep. Um, sleep is vital. So vital. And if, if for some reason, as people get older, they have a hard time either falling asleep mm -hmm. or staying asleep. Mm -hmm. And having a good morning routine is vital also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, have a morning routine. Something that you stick to every morning and it just I don't know it just feels good like you'll look forward to your morning if you have a routine if you're not getting up at the last possible minute that you have to go out the door don't do that that's horrible it's the worst first of all it's dangerous yeah isn't you're it getting like in the dangerous? car driving yeah. and you're still waking up super dangerous that's why there's a lot of accidents in the morning because I, I think most Americans just put on the clothes brush their teeth and boom run out yeah they're like they're like um like they, I, I'm, I'm talking crap, but I used to be that person. I would stay in bed till the last possible minute. And I wish I would have known that sooner that if you just kind of like give yourself an extra hour in the morning to wake up, have your coffee, have a little leisure time, watch the news or whatever, um, you're, you're just have a better day. Yeah, true. Way better. I hate, I hate when I have terrible sleep or didn't sleep too good. I, I don't feel good. Then I, need that. then I need that nap to recharge my body. Oh, completely throws me off. Mm -hmm. it, it will throw me off for the remainder of the day. And it's yeah. kind of hard. Like, it's hard to recover from it. I don't know. Like, it just ruins my day. Yeah, and you feel it in your workouts, too. You don't have that extra oomph. You, it's like you're going through the motions. Yes. I hate those days. Oh, I hate that. Yes. I. When did I have that recently? Oh, you know what does that for me? Mm. If I drink alcohol the day before. Mm -hmm. alcohol taxes my energy production big time does it big time i mean does it a lot like you feel sluggish the next yeah, day yeah of course you do don't you well it taxes your liver yes of course that's why you haven't been drinking it lately at all like i could a do a, a <clears throat> i could drink a cocktail saturday night because i don't work out sunday mm -hmm. but if i have cocktails friday night and then saturday morning yeah i'm kind of like I, it's just a different feeling and I don't like it. And there's a significant difference in how I feel during my workout. And I don't really get that feeling very much mm -hmm. either a night of poor sleep, but to me worse than poor sleep is alcohol consumption because it's a double whammy because when you have alcohol consumption at night, you automatically will have poor sleep. People think like, Oh, it's great to have like a glass of wine before bed or something like that. Alcohol is an upper. It's not a downer. Like it'll, it, it gets your heart rate, heart palpitations, it mm -hmm. increases your heart rate in terms of that kind of stuff. Like it's not good for sleep Yeah. or anxiety. Mm -hmm. I mean, people think it is, but it really isn't. For anxiety? Yeah. Like they think like, oh, I just want to unwind with a glass of wine or something. Like it's not. Mm. No, I don't, I don't drink alcohol for my anxiety. Do you sleep good when you, I know, but do you sleep better when you've been drinking do you sleep good when you've been drinking or not not mm, do you notice the difference um i knock out but i do feel it the next day for sure my energy is not the same i can feel it when i'm in the gym yeah i don't i i wake up when we used to really party don't get hammered hell no it's horrible like broken up sleep oh my god i don't even know how how did i function i don't know how did i function back then when i would have to go to work when we get home at two three in the morning and I'd have to go to work the next day. Crazy. You just you suck it up and deal with it. But that was tough. 
but it's not that you didn't feel bad. Like, oh, when you're younger, you didn't feel bad. It's like, I think that when you're younger, you're more willing to feel bad. Oh yeah. It's not that you don't feel bad. You're just more willing to feel bad. I'm not willing to sacrifice like my morning routine. I don't want to like jeopardize my morning because I love my mornings. That's when I feel the best. That's when I'm in the best mood. I'm the most productive. I get my laundry done. I, I do this podcast a lot in the mornings. Like sometimes we've tried to do the podcast in the afternoons and I have great in the morning. I'll be like, yeah, I'll do it in the afternoon. And then I'm like, afternoon comes around. I'm like, nope. Start conking out. Nope. And it's not gonna, starts running low. Yeah. I start to like power down around 4 p.m. Not that I go to sleep at four, but I can't do anything that's very, like, intricate after four. Well, because we've almost been up 12 hours. Yeah, because I'm up, up at five. Five, five thirty. Think about it. Time five mm-hmm. o'clock rolls around. What do we always say? After you've been awake and doing things, your brain after 12 hours starts to become mush. Yeah. It ain't as sharp. No. it's, it's... Because it's meant to be that way, right? Early part of the day, energy. Get you through the day. Gets the evening start powering down well vessel. yeah it's actually it's like it's nighttime. a circadian rhythm that naturally happens we have like this yes. like chemical reactions that happen in our bodies all day long in the morning explain that babe so some people don't know what you just said the circadian rhythm is like the um it's it's almost like our body's clock right yes, and internally. it goes based sunrise <clears throat> and sunset mm-hmm. so we're actually meant to wake up with the sunrise mm-hmm. So that's why it feels so good to wake up at like 5 a.m. as the sun is rising, as at the sunrise. I, I feel like that's when I wake up naturally, is like around sunrise. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you wake up with the sunrise and then your what, what does your body do? It releases cortisol and serotonin. Mm. And with the sun down, your cortisol levels drop and you release melatonin. And that's your circadian rhythm. And people often like to vilify cortisol. Cortisol is your friend. You need cortisol to survive. Same thing about stress. There's two different kinds of stress. Yeah, cortisol, it's it's related, right? You need cortisol. Your body needs to know if you're in danger. It needs to, and that's all cortisol, fight or flight. Mm -hmm. That's like your body's like signals. So cortisol is not a bad thing. It's just that cortisol at the wrong time or too much cortisol yeah. or cortisol for the wrong reasons is a bad thing so like if you are overly stressed person you're going to have more cortisol and in order to reduce that you have to lower stress but it's best not to lower stress from the things that you want to get cortisol from like people will be like oh no i can't exercise because i have too much cortisol so yes, what? because exercise gives you cortisol. It does. <clears throat> but rather than the first thing you do is stop exercising, how about you actually start start lowering the, the reason why you have too much cortisol? You have yeah. too much cortisol because you are not getting enough sleep, your stress, your your time, your body clock is off, your stress levels are not you're not managing stress right. Don't get rid of the things that are good a good cortisol, you know? Anyways. So, same thing. Uh, stress. When you're working out, you're stressing your body out. You're sweating, you're stressing. Well, that's a good thing. Your body loves that. Yeah. It's enjoying that. Yeah, exactly. So, quarter, that's why I, I actually am a person that prefers that prefers um, working out in the morning because it's your body's natural cortisol is in the morning. And that's why we have like... Sometimes there's energized in the gym. You have good workouts. Yeah. You, know, you figure, you, now, you wonder you, why you have such good workouts and energized. That's why it's better to work out in the morning. But if you are somebody that needs to work out in the evenings, because that's what your schedule is like, it will raise your cortisol. And that's why it makes it difficult to go to sleep. You I, have to have the wind down time. This guy, that, my dummy, I used to work swing shift. And I get off work four to midnight. My gym was open 24 hours. I go to the gym at like 1230 at night and working out to like two. Not the smartest. Yeah. And I'm, then I'm eating after. Now I'm awake watching TV yeah. till four in the morning. This is in my... When I was a young guy. 18, 19, 20, 21. Now, instead of me waking up four to midnight, I go to bed. Wake up eight, nine, go knock that out first, which was smarter. Yeah. But I was never a morning guy back then. I hated the morning. I hated getting up and yeah. definitely not working out. Now I love it. I'm the opposite. Now I'm older. 
Weird, huh? I know it's weird. I wasn't a morning person either. I was always an evening workout guy, afternoon, evening. Yeah, but when you start to learn about your body, I mean, you can work out. You can have a I like after rearrange your schedule, but but not too late. If you learn your body and what it's naturally built to do, and the chemical reactions in your body, and you utilize that to your advantage. You're just going to maximize. It's kind of like you are um, fine tuning. You're just maximizing your body's response system yep. because you are going with it, not against it. You're not trying to do something that's unnatural. Mm -hmm. You're doing, you know, something that's natural. It's natural to wake up with the sunrise. So, true. You know, you're not like doing something unnatural by waking up when the sun is rising. That's why people who work graveyard shifts usually have poor health well they have high cortisol usually i've yes. worked graveyard shifts it's the worst you kidding me everybody's going to work waking up and you're trying to come home to sleep so you have to do your best to trick your body and reset your circadian rhythm the thing that sucks about that is then your days off it really just isn't it's a mind f Dude, it's... because you can you know like darken your room and have room darkening blinds and like try to reset your body's rhythm to what your schedule is but then on your days off, when you try to live like a normal person, it kind of throws you off. I feel like people who work shift work and things like that, like it does a, uh, an imp impacts their life. My mom was a graveyard worker her entire life. And I definitely felt like it impacted her. High cortisol. Yeah. For sure. For sure. But if you kind of like just learn those things and like not not vilify things that um, that can actually be to your advantage. Listen, cortisol is great. It's good. It's going to help you have a good workout. Um, it's not just all a bad thing, just because people like call it the stress hormone. Yeah. You know. Vilify. But good, there's not, not all stress is bad. It's good stress. There's good stress, bad stress. It's like carbs are the enemy. No, they're not. Too many of them can be. Too much sugar, too much anything. Yeah. It's just like. Everything's all about excess and balance. Even like sugar. Sugar is another thing that's vilified, but mm -hmm. we need right. sugar to survive. Facts. We actually need sugar. Yeah. Like sugar is not the enemy at all nope. and it's not really sugar that it's just that sugar's good so you eat a lot of it therefore you consume a lot of calories with things that are high in sugar and it's the calories that it's the that's the villain yeah so don't just like stop and think about things don't just take everything at face value and like i guess question things all the time just because something is like um been vilified carbohydrates bread pasta think yes. why like why why is it vilified Your portions you know Indeed. it's just stop and think like i think we just got we've gotten kind of like caught up in the hype of, on a lot of things Always. and just remember the hype is constantly changing Always. five years from now yeah it won't be carbs this, it'll these, be something else yeah and all these so-called experts yeah okay so i think that uh just remember cortisol can be your friend yep. it's not necessarily your enemy just rethink how you can use it to help you instead of um, hurt you in the long run. I mm -hmm. think it'll make life a lot easier for you guys. All right, you guys, thank you so much. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you.